I'm someone who's been eternally single, but there's this one thing that I now know that when I start dating again, it's going to be so much easier to find my person. And that is knowing myself, knowing what I want. I'm not saying six foot two, blonde hair, blue eyes, not that kind of stuff. I mean, that would be nice, obviously, you know, if they look like how you want them to look. Child free by choice. I'm also 36. So I can't be having a guy that's on the fence about having kids or, and I don't really want somebody who's got young children either because I don't envision that for my life over the next couple of years. Or breaker, that's pretty common sense. But also in terms of... Oh, well, hold on. You don't, you don't want to date a single father? You're not a real woman. Boundaries and values and what I stand for and what I don't. I went on a date a few, about six, seven months ago with a guy who had too much to drink, in my opinion, to then drive home. I said to him, you probably, I can try to drop you somewhere. Like, you should probably get a taxi. Like, I was driving and sober. And I let it slide. He's like, that never happens. Yeah, I probably had that. I don't I shouldn't have had. The first date, and I went on two or three more of them. For me, that's like telling the universe as well as that person that that is okay with you and it's not I'm just more secure now in going in being cutthroat to be honest he ended up being an emotionally unavailable a narcissist look at that he ended up being an emotionally unavailable f boy and narcissist there was many red flags in that day <laughs> really being aware of those red flags and also what is a red flag to you and what you it's incredible about 0.5 percent 0.5 to 5% of the American population could be classified as narcissists. And yet somehow, just about every woman has dated one. And, it, I mean, I don't know. It's incredible, right? It's kind of like they, they're they all so obsessed with, like, psychosomatics and psychoanalysis and psychotherapy. They all have a sociology or psychology degree. They're so obsessed with with this like therapy and stuff and they constantly are, are speaking in, in psych psychologist terminology and you're you're so not that you have no idea what you're talking about it's like yeah they're super obsessed with it's like psychoanalysis and she's even going to start getting into a more like an anxious attachment i'm like what what is that what where are you guys getting this information what are you talking about just no it's like they've all kind of are turning into therapists themselves but like not actually and then they want you to date them and it's they're just going to be psycho analyzing you the entire time and the problem is is they don't even know what they're doing they don't know what they're talking about so they're going to go on a first date and like oh and he, he picked that up with his left hand that shows signs of anxious attachment style from his childhood Someone must have touched him, and I don't want to be a part of that. You know, just they're, they're going to try and piece things together and, like, red flag. He's a narcissist with a borderline personality disorder or some shit. It's like, well, no, I'm not. I'm an average guy, and I'm hungry. Gee, what are you talking about? It's, it's silly. And they're just so obsessed with, I mean, yes, like psychotherapy. They advocate for everybody to go. I don't know where this obsession comes from. With, with this, it, it must be that they all just get these like sociology and psychology degrees when they go to college. It's like, I'm pretty sure that is one of the most common degrees these chicks get. It's like gender studies, just pointless shit. And then they go on here talking about, oh yeah, I dated this guy and I diagnosed him. Yeah, I diagnosed him with narcissist, narcissism. I, I discovered he was 0.5% of the population. It's like, yeah, one in 200 people have narcissi uh, narcissism or narcissists, and, and you've all dated one, huh? It's interesting how that works, right? Your values are and what you want. I know myself now about the way I feel about some. I'm not excited to see that person again in a romantic way. And I know people are going to be here saying, oh, that's your anxious attachment. I have done that before where anxious. I've tried to say it's just my ego and it's just my commitment phobe issues commitment phobe issues my ego my anxious attachment it's like they all think things these things are are what do, what do they like to say rooted in it's it's rooted in fear of commitment it's rooted in this it's just no no it's not you stop psycho analyzing everything 
Stop suggesting therapy over little things. I, I understand the value in therapy for people probably who have like PTSD or who, who have been in war and have experienced horrendous things and seen horrendous things. And those things, they, they probably need to talk about it and get it off their chest. But your average man, your average woman who hasn't, let's be real, we, we, we hear all this talk about trauma. What What is so traumatic? You live in a first world country and and I just, I simply don't believe you when you say you've been through so much trauma, trauma. It's these buzzwords. It, it is very femme-centric language, right? Extremely, it's extremely feminine. They just want to push therapy on everybody. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But then again, this is probably just propaganda pushed by therapists and dude can you imagine the the booming industry that is therapy these people must be raking it in i saw a meme the other day and it was like a therapist rubbing rubbing their hands when they see a girl with blue hair walk in just like yep there's a bag there's a check there's a recurring client just secured my payment on my mercedes benz out there it ended up being completely the wrong relationship for six months I was dating this guy and it never felt right and I just kept blaming on myself and I just being scared and it's like just trusting yourself. If I'm not excited to see that person, if it's a, he's nice, he's fine, it was alright, just like no, like no, no matter how good on paper it might look, no. The thing is I'm going back out with is keeping to my deal breakers sticking to my values and what I accept and what I don't accept, which to me, not what's reasonable as female behaviour, aligned with my values and what I think is important and how someone should behave or not behave. And the last one is listening to my body. Listening to your body? Well, what? I don't understand. What do you, what do you mean? Listening to your body as if Man, I remember reacting to a clip a long time ago, and this chick was saying she started dating this guy, and her IBS started flaring up or something like this, and she took that as a sign, this man. this The man is the problem. Now, I understand how stress can probably agitate these issues, right? But to, to but that's not the way she was articulating. She was saying this is some sort of message from the universe that this man is not the, the man meant for you. It's not even that he was making her super stressed. It was just her being around him. His energy was, was making her IBS flare up. And, and again, it's like, it's like psychosomatics. It's just enough. What are you talking about? And then the, you'll hear them talk about numerology and astrology. It's like, won't date a Gemini. No, that's where, that's where I draw the line. But I will date a criminal. And so here's another clip. I think she refers to this guy. Again, I think as a narcissist, maybe not, but it was it's some, some form of the, the female jargon. Hi, darlings. Let's talk about being nearly 30, but definitely being single. If you are new to my page, my TikTok, my name's Zoe. I'm 29 and I'm turning 30 in July. And I am single. I have been single now for three years. There was a little something in between, but honestly, at this point, it doesn't even count. I have kind of done my life a little bit backwards. Around 25 years old, I've been in a really long-term relationship. I bought a house with this guy, totally envisaged being together for the rest of our lives. Literally, when we bought our house, there was a nursery at the end of the road, and we talked about sending our theoretical future children there. So this was very serious. But I had like a little bit of a midlife crisis. I she had a midlife crisis. She got bored. I think I felt like I was settling down way too early and way too young. Settling down way too early, way too young. Not to interrupt, but 25 years old. You, you, it's not like you're 20. It's not like you're 21. You're 25. I mean, that's, that's too early to be settling down. Huh? Crazy, man young and i just hadn't lived my life yet we broke up so i did have another relationship after that that was all right again i'm going to interrupt what did, what do you mean lived your life yet 
can they just cut to the point? Wait, hold on. Do you think you can't live your life with this man you're with? Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just cut through the bullshit. You mean you want to ride more, more cocks, right? Like you want to, you want to hop on the carousel, as as they say. You want to, you want to have fun. You want to party. You want random hookups. You want to be a three hundred four. You want to get out there on the streets and get to walking. I mean, that's what it, this means. It's like your life doesn't end when you get a boyfriend. You guys, you guys realize this, right? Your life doesn't end, even when you have children. So just spare me the bullshit and, and, and say it for what it is. You want to hook up with more men for whatever reason. It was very toxic and emotionally abusive. That's another story for another day. There it was. Let me rewind it a little bit and I'll shut up. Early and way too young and I just hadn't lived my life yet. We broke up. So I did have another relationship after that that was very toxic and emotionally abusive. That's another story for another day. We now are where we are now, which is pretty much three years single and approaching 30 this summer. So she got out of a three-year relationship and she started seeing this new guy. And I guess, what do you know? What, what have you? He was a toxic, emotional abuser. At, at what point does this accusation become defamation? Because abuser, that is a hefty, hefty term to throw on someone, specifically a man in this, in this world. When you call a man an abuser, that, that gets taken very seriously. And the, the guys will get fired. His, his reputation will be tarnished. The people around him will be less inclined to associate with him and fear that his bad name, bad name, will then be bestowed upon them and they'll have to face the repercussions of being in the same fucking circumference of this man, right? This is this is what it is. So it's like these women will just haphazardly throw out these terms. Hey, he's an emotional abuser. Well, hold on. What do you mean? How, why? Like, just uh, enough is enough. And I wouldn't be coming at these chicks so hard if they weren't throwing out such just this term you call so this other chick called this guy a narcissist you're calling him an emotional abuser at, at what point do we put the mirror in front of them and say hey maybe maybe you're the emotional abuser here fuck maybe you're the narcissist maybe you're the narcissist it's like accusing someone of being an emotional abuser that kind of sounds a bit abusive. <laughs> I mean, shit. That's not a good thing to do. That's kind of fucked up. That's a big accusation. You better have a lot of evidence. You better be able to prove it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of, kind of over it. I'm kind of tired of hearing this. I'm kind of tired of these baseless accusations. Because, again, while they're not talking about me in this clip, these clips, someday it could be me. But even though this time it isn't, someday it could be me. And this is getting too much to where just like men are being it's like um, convicted by by public opinion with really no no backing, no proof, no evidence. And it's just I'm a bit annoyed if if you can't tell. And yeah, she's saying they broke up. She said we broke up. I'm like, well, you broke up with him. I'm not so sure he, he was feeling feeling the same way. Yeah, I'm just I'm over it. Anyways, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. But just be careful out there, you guys. And you never know. One of your exes, one of these chicks you've seen, she might be running around calling you an emotional abuser. Careful out there.